Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for a ham shack chat. This time, uh, that chat will be about WinLink and how to use it with your FT991A. There are a few common acronyms used when working with WinLink, and that I'll be using during this chat. RMS stands for Radio Message Servers. CMS is for common message servers, and ARDOP, A-R-D-O-P, is the Amateur Radio Digital Open Protocol. Here's our system. We've got a computer. It's uh, feeding information into the sound cards of our FT991A. Uh, and this could be any radio. If you're using a radio that doesn't have an built-in sound card, I recommend that you get a hold of the signal link. And I'll put a link in the video description to the signal link. Your signal is going to be transmitted into the ether where it is going to be aimed at and picked up by one of the RMS. And uh, the RMSs uh, are spread out all over the world. Uh, you see every green dot up here is an RMS. Uh, they then send it up through the internet to two cloud servers, uh, CMSA and CMSB. They used to have five physical servers, but they decided that it would be cheaper to maintain these by just buying some time on a couple Amazon servers. These two clouds are continually backed up against each other. So if something ends up in CMSB, it's duplicated in CMSA and vice versa. When you send your email, it goes from, uh, from, your, from your computer using the WinLink Express over to the radio uh, using the RDOP program, again, up into the air. And your email ends up in the CMS and stays there until somebody's ready to pick it up. When somebody wants to pick it up, you again initiate a connection to the RMS up in here, and uh, it'll look out there. Uh, the first thing it'll do, it'll come up here and say, oh, are there any messages for me? And the CMS will download the message to the RMS, which will then pass it down to your computer uh, through your radio. I've included a lot of information in the video description, including links to every website that I'll reference throughout this video and a chapter listing of each topic I'll be discussing. Now I encourage you to use those chapters to quickly review topics or to skip things you already are familiar with. WinLink is just another digital mode not terribly different than any other, but the application and infrastructure is unique. In short, WinLink allows you to send emails from your computer to any other computer without the need for an internet connection. I'll discuss some possible uses for this at the end of the video. So, let's take a closer look. This is the main WinLink globalradioemail.org website. It's got a lot of good information and spend some time taking a look at it. But for now, we're going to go over here to the download tab, which is going to show us two directories. The one you want to use is the second directory, the user programs directory. The program that you want to uh, download is this WinLink Express install. It is a zip file, so you're going to have to open up that zip file and then uh, run the installer program. I'm assuming that you already know how to do that. Once you're installed, you want to open up the WinLink Express, which is this little checkerboard icon. I've also got it down here in my taskbar, and I'm going to open it up. And when you initially see it, you're going to get a prompt to uh, set set up the set it up for yourself. So we're going to go to settings, 
And this is the information that will be on that prompt. You're going to want to put in your call sign. You have to give it a password. Um, you're going to have to put in your chosen password recovery email, which I have right here. Uh, there's a lot of other information here. Uh, the uh, grid square and uh, your address is all up in there. To get your WinLink Express registration code, you're going to have to go to the Amateur Radio Safety Foundation website. Right here, you can register your WinLink Express. You're going to put in your name, put in your call sign, then register using PayPal. It's a cost of $24. If you read right here, it says registration is voluntary and not necessary to use the program. Uh, registration requires that you purchase a digital key to be applied to your program. You do not have to use the red, have the registration key in there. But for 24 bucks, for them to continue developing uh, what is essentially an otherwise free system, it's worth it to me. Uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, once you got all of this set up, update and uh, close that. We're going to create an email by clicking on this little email new message button. And I'm going to put my email address right down here. My subject is going to be demo. And our message is going to be And now we're going to come up here. We're going to post this to the outbox. This is my outbox and you'll see when I post it, now I have one message. Here it is sitting in my outbox, ready to go. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to pick out your TNC. This is a kind of a virtual TNC and it's very similar uh, to the old dial-up where you had to connect your phone and put in a phone number and do all that stuff. And uh, the only difference is you don't get that annoying thing. Uh, other options here is Vara HF, Vara FM, Iridium Go, WinLink. All of these, uh, uh, Vara has a free version, but you'll probably want to pay for the upgraded version. RDOP is built into the WinLink Express. So we're gonna make sure that for the purposes of this video, future videos might look at those other things, we're gonna pick RDOP. Let's see what's on the menu. So we have a couple menu settings for you. And those of you who have watched my videos on WSJTX will recognize a lot of these settings. There are a handful that are different. Uh, first, we go into our menu. And we're going to start off with menu item 31, which is our cat rate or our bits per second that uh, the radio is going to talk out at. I have mine set at 9600 BPS and you can set it for whatever value you want. Just make sure to jot that value down because you're going to need it a little bit later on in this video. 032 is your cat tote. Uh, default is 10. Uh, you need to have that at 100 milliseconds. CAT RTS is enabled. Menu item 62 needs to be set to others. And menu item 64 needs to be set to 1500 hertz. Also, menu item 65, other shift, needs to be set to 1500 hertz. Now we're going to look at data cut low, uh, and that's off and data cut high is off. We'll move up here, menu item 70, you're gonna be connecting to the rear. Data PTT select is RTS. Data port select 072 is your USB. On the front panel, you're gonna to wanna to set your mode to data USB. Although in my experience, USB seems to work almost as well but the majority of folks that I ran across in my research recommended strongly uh, data USB. Now let's go take a look at our functions. You want your width set at 3000 
and you want your meter on ALC and I'm going to go show you what I've done here so we change your meter to ALC and you'll notice that I've also put meter down on the bottom row you want your RF power set between 5 watts and 50 watts start low and go up you'll see that my RF power is currently 25 DT gain uh, again they want you to start low and move up uh, and what you want to do is adjust your DT gain uh, to where it meets uh, is about mid-range on the uh, ALC there's a note in the video description about how you should adjust it and I stole it word for word uh, right out of uh, on some of my research and I'm not ashamed to admit that it's a good write-up so now we want to go back we want to set our narrow wide to wide we already set our wide to 3000 these these two kind of work together you want it to be on wide you want your AGC to be on auto you want your notch turned off you want your uh, contour turned off DNR DNF all of those are off and those are your radio settings that you want Hook me up. now we're going to connect the radio to your computer we do that by starting off with everything off I want your radio turned off and your power supply turned off so we're going to open up our device manager we want to open ports com and LPT then we're going to turn on just our power supply and you may hear the computer make a beep bop sound and you will see that I've added two COM ports the enhanced COM port I have is on my COM5 the standard COM port is on my COM6 I say it's mine because yours will probably be different you want to take a, a note notepad and jot this down that you know which which one of your com ports is on in the enhanced and which one of the com ports is for standard and now we're going to double click on that com port and go to port settings if you recall when we went through our video I told you to jot down what your data rate was here you can see I've got 9600 which if you recall that's what I set up when I went through my menus on the radio you want to for my standard uh, again port settings is at 9600 bits per second and we can say OK now that we've downloaded and installed WinLink Express made the appropriate settings to our rigs menus and functions and verified the connection to our computer we're ready to move on and set up WinLink Express and the RDOP TNC so if you haven't already go ahead and turn on your rig and we're going to open our RDOP session and this is the way it all comes up the first thing we're going to go do is we're going to come up here to settings and we're going to set up our TNC you don't need to worry about any of this uh, but just make sure uh, these numbers are the same the 8200 uh, and then one more 8201 everything else you don't have to worry about for connect requests uh, when we get around to actually demoing this and I show you you'll see the connect request this will time out after 10 requests uh, you can set it as high as 15 or as low as 5. In order to have this come up automatically, you want to click the Show RDOP TNC screen when it's launched. Uh, if you don't have that clicked, it'll come up minimized and you'll have to open it. Now we're going to update it and you'll see the whole thing reset. and here's the standards and wait for it to get a little further okay ready to start calling now we're going to back to settings radio setup the only thing that you're going to do is select 
that you're using a Yesu FT991A here. Ignore everything else. Okay, I'm just going to close this. If I had made any changes, I would have gone update, but we're going to close it. Now we're going to come down to the RDOP uh, window and click on File. And we're going to do our virtual TNC setup. You're going to uh, ensure that everything is set up the way it was over in the other screen. Uh, and you're going to pull up your sound cards. Everything else is good. So we're going to save save this to the INI file. We're going to go back into file. And we're going to go to the optional radio setup. Again, FT991A or your favorite radio. Uh, COM5 or whatever your enhanced COM port was. You should have that noted down. 9600 baud or whatever you selected as your baud rate. Uh, and then click Enable RTS and Enable DTR. The way the FT991 works is you want to use RTS on whatever you have as your standard uh, version. So we will save that. As the old saying goes, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's send that email we set up previously, reply to it using my Gmail account, and get the reply via WinLink. Note that this process can take a bit of time, so I'll be fast forwarding or just skipping sections that are really not applicable. We almost finished. So now let's connect out to the whole WinLink system. We do that through our RMSs, which I described earlier, and we've got a number of channels. These are all the channels, and as we scroll down, you'll start to see you hit yellow and red. Uh, these are really not terribly useful, but uh, if you got greens and greens, you're good there. Now, I happened to have picked one out that uh, is going to be good for us. So I'm going to pull that and just double click on that. You'll see the information comes up. Uh, unfortunately, the cat controls for uh, controlling the rig don't seem to work all that good. Uh, I've never been able to get it to work, and it's a common complaint that I discovered. So we're going to have to enter in the frequency. And the frequency we're going to want right here, they call it the dial frequency, is 14101.7. So we come over here, band, enter, zero, one, four, one, oh, one, and enter. Now we're going to start calling. And what's going to happen is if everything works out right, I'm going to connect to this KB5 HCD and it's going to automatically do everything it needs to send this email. And uh, we'll go ahead and fast forward to that once the connection is made. But here, you see, I am actually calling. I'm, I'm calling them, and you see down here, when it pops up, okay, he's coming back to me. Now, completed send of message. You can see that my outbox is empty. My email has gone. And now I am disconnecting and that completes that. Now, let me pop up my email. And you can see my email has been delivered to my inbox. And I'm going to do a reply. This is a reply to the demo email. And I'm going to send that. You've got mail. 
Now we're going to check to see if our email's out there. But you can you can watch up here and you can watch down here to make sure everything is all together. And our message is finally received. And I can come over here and I can click on my inbox. And here it is. So this is a reply to this demo email. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. <laughs> Winlink has supported many agencies, including Ares and Racy's, Mars, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the U.S. Coast Guard, the Australian Maritime Safety Authority, and many other non-governmental organizations and federal, state, and local government agencies worldwide. It has been used during natural disasters such as hurricanes, tsunamis, and fire relief. Future Windlink videos from me will include using Windlink with VHF, UHF, FM, making person-to-person -person direct connections, and a few other things that uh, we'll do a little deeper dive on. If you get Winlink up and working, send me an email at my Winlink email address shown below. I don't like asking for anything early on in the video because my thought is I haven't earned any of these things until I've delivered good content. If you think I've delivered, then please give me a like. You like me. You really like me. By popping that thumbs up icon, if you know of others who may enjoy this content, please share. Thanks for sharing. Didn't know. With them. I'm still a relative newbie in this mode, so I may have made a few mistakes along the way. I have, however, tested everything presented here and shown it to you. So, functionally, it should be good. But if I made an incorrect statement somewhere along the line, please correct me down in the comments. Comments? Finally, please consider subscribing Sign up now. to this channel. I certainly would be grateful. 73, until the next Hey Y'all, and as always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.